Alright you guys, this is Ryan from Wadfix here and Battleground just ended. I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on every match and whatnot. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first match we're going to be talking about is The Miz versus Darren Young. I think this might have been the weakest match on the show, honestly. I think the ending was a little bit, like, crazy. I mean, I don't even know what happened with Bob Backlund trying to take off his shirt and it not working, and then Maurice tripping. It was really confusing, um, but still, your Intercontinental Champion, like I said, it is The Miz. And not every single match on this show can be a winner, and unfortunately, this match was not one of them. Then we had on the pre-show, uh, we had the Usos taking on Brizongo, which was a match I forgot to do my predictions on, and I thought the Usos were going to win. However, Brizongo got the win. I just want to say thank you to WWE on a personal level for giving Tyler Breeze a pay-per-view victory. I was genuinely shocked when they won, and I'm so happy that Brizongo won. Uh, maybe they'll get a shot at the tag titles. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're at that level yet. However, I am really excited for this tag team going into the future uh, and maybe, and I think probably we'll get a rematch on SmackDown where the Usos win because it, there seems to be this pattern sometimes on pay-per-views where a match happens and then they just do the rematch on like the next Raw or SmackDown. So uh, expect that. Next up, we had the New Day versus the Wyatt family, and I mean, just like the last match I talked about, uh, this was kind of a shocker for me. I really didn't think the Wyatt family was going to win, considering the fact that they're not even a group anymore, so I guess uh, maybe they just wanted Bray Wyatt to look strong, uh, which I, I am happy about. You know, he does get a pay-per-view victory, however, the New Day does take a loss, and I think the question is, who do they take on next uh, for the tag titles? Will the club challenge them? I'm not really sure what tag team will, however, I just would have preferred if they got the victory. Next up, we might have had actually my favorite moment in the whole entire pay-per-view. I am so happy for once I was right on this, as Bailey was indeed Sasha Banks' surprise tag team partner. I'm just so happy to see her on the main roster. Uh, I think JBL made a comment to the uh, effect of like it's a one-time deal. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, why would you not have Bailey on the main roster? I hope they are. Uh, obviously, this is filmed before Raw, so I'm not 100% sure whether or not that was a one-time deal. I don't think it will be. Uh, I hope Bailey will be in the corner for Sasha when she takes on Charlotte at SummerSlam, which is another prediction that I have. Uh, but just so happy Bailey's on the main roster, or at least that she had an appearance. This is something I was actually really happy about that I had in my predictions video. Let me just say, I dressed up Zack Ryder in my predictions video uh, like Mr. America, quote unquote, just because I thought it looked funny. And little did we all know he actually came out wearing a jacket super similar to this. And my first reaction was, I can't believe that I actually called it. I also called this match as Rusev did defeat Zack Ryder. And uh, unfortunately, after the match, a uh, very sad moment occurred when Mojo Rawley uh, saved Zack Ryder from a further beatdown from Rusev. Uh, if you guys have not been paying attention to my Instagram lately, I have made it very clear that I'm not the biggest fan of Mojo Rawley. So uh, seeing him come out, uh, you know, it, it wasn't the, the, the best thing for me. I'll, I'll put it like that. And then we had, in my opinion, uh, the match of the night. It might have even been the match of the year. I'm not even sure. We had Kevin Owens taking on Sami Zayn, and I also got my prediction right on this one. Sami Zayn was victorious. The match itself was just really, really awesome. Uh, in the beginning, it was a little bit slow with Kevin Owens being really funny and being Kevin Owens, and then it really picked up. Zayn hit a lot of awesome moves. My personal favorite uh, spot or whatnot uh, was when Zayn went for the half and half suplex. Uh, he hit it on Owens. Owens got right back up, went for another clothesline, and then Zayn actually hit the suplex, and then of course he hit two Haluva kicks. It was such an awesome ending, such a perfect ending to this feud. Whether or not it's over, I'm really not even sure, because like I said, I'm filming this before Raw, so I'm not sure if this is progressing or not. Uh, I think it is the perfect way to end it, as much as I would love to see a follow-up match with maybe a stipulation, uh, but I'm just so happy that Sami Zayn got the victory, and it was truly a great way to end this feud. Except we had Becky Lynch versus Natalia, who I obviously don't have in figure form. You know, I thought the match was was good. I thought it was a little short. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll have another one and it'll be longer. I thought it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, however, they had such little time, so I wasn't expecting anything amazing. 
then we had the highlight reel with Chris Jericho featuring Randy Orton and I mean it was everything I expected it to be uh, I thought it was really funny actually and I think my favorite part of it all besides Chris Jericho uh, mocking Orton and his RKO's out of nowhere uh, I thought it was really funny or actually crazy when Orton said something to the effect of like it takes 20 suplexes to go to Suplex City, it only takes one RKO to go to Viperville. I, I don't like the Viperville thing. And then he said, no enhancements needed or something like that. Taking a shot at Brock Lesnar, who obviously just tested positive uh, for the anti-doping policy with UFC. So I thought that that was very cool of him. And of course, we got the RKO we were all waiting for. I love the teases for it. This was really entertaining, and it did its job as I'm more and more excited for the Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton match at SummerSlam. Also, can I just say that Chris Jericho is just on fire as of late. This might be my favorite run of him that I've actually ever seen, because uh, I know I wasn't alive when, or I was alive, but I was too young to see his younger run. Uh, so I just want to say Jericho is on fire, and I'm loving him right now. And then we had our main event of Battleground, the Shield Triple Threat. And before I get into the match itself, I just want to say that I'm very very happy and want to thank the WWE for keeping the WWE Championship on Dean Ambrose. I'm so happy I went with my heart on my prediction video and chose him to win and I'm just so happy that he's actually going to be a WWE Champion for longer than a month which is awesome. He's already have like what three successful title reigns or defenses I should say and uh, I'm really liking what they're doing with him. As for the match itself I don't want to try to sound negative because I was waiting for the shield triple threat for what feels like a really long time and I don't want to say it disappointed. I feel like it was just missing something. I don't know what it was. They still, all three of these guys put on one hell of a performance and I commend each and every single one of them for trying their best to put on the best match possible. I just honestly felt like maybe it was a little bit too short. It just felt like it was missing like one more big thing in the match. Um, but that's it for Battleground. I hope, you know, overall I thought it was a very good show. It was very happy. It went off on a very good note with Ambrose as the champion, which was very pleasing. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned to some SummerSlam when I do my predictions, which I think is the next pay-per-view, I can't even remember. And as always, stay tuned to the next one. Thank God Dean Ambrose is our WWE Champion.